I'm completely pro-capitalist. I do not agree with the Obama's agreement with uh, um, Cuba. No, no, I'm, I'm asking you. You seem to be telling me that the Pope's vision for a new economic system works. Where? Where does it work? He does, he does not speak against capitalism. Do many of his ideas... He certainly is speaking against capitalism. Every other word out of this communist pope's mouth is anti-capitalist. See, he's coming to the United States, and we'll, we'll find out here soon. What is pope blames refugee crisis on the god of money and a socioeconomic system that is bad and unjust. What would you say that is? You're, you're, you're trying to lead me down the path to put words in my mouth. And no, those are the Pope's words. I didn't put those words in your Pope's mouth. He gave an interview with the Portugal-based Radio Renascença yesterday, which you didn't hear yet. But he said that the current refugee crisis is being caused by a, quote, bad, unjust socioeconomic system that worships the god of money. True. I mean, a lot of that is oh. true. And you can't deny that. And, and I want to point out... Wait, wait, what did you just say? Then why are these refugees running to the god of money in Germany, then, if money is so bad? Because it works. You cannot be obsessed with money. You're wait, wait, what do you mean it works? You, what the hell are you saying? You're, you're saying two things at once. Absolutely, and that's what capitalism is. Capitalism is only as good. Capitalism can go astray if capitalism is, is goes too far. If we focus more... Right, on so now you're, now you're an economic expert. So what would you do to fix our broken system, since you're an expert on the economy? <laughs> what would I do to fix the economy? Have a balanced budget. Um... Uh, You'd have a balanced budget, so that would mean that the, the whole precept of Marxism would come to a crashing halt. Obama's printing money, which is what they do in socialist countries, in order to buy off the poor. So how could you do th both things at once? Pope Francis is just saying, listen, take the focus off... Francis is a double-talking Marxist agitator of the type that the church would have excommunicated 30 years ago. 30 years ago, the Catholic Church opposed people like this. 30 years ago, the church fought people like this. 20 years ago, the church opposed people like him. Very much like America did 20 years ago with Barack Obama. Obama and the Pope and Bernie Sanders are preaching from the same exact prayer book. They're singing the same verses. And it was written by a very famous composer named Karl Marx. My friends, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the corruption in the political system is well established. There's no point in talking about it. You call them corruptitions, you know what exactly what we're talking about. But the corruption of the church is something that needs to be discussed. When you see a pope who is overtly political, who is so out of his league when it comes to uh, climate science, that it's not even laughable, it's uh, just something that you cannot believe would be going on. He has as much knowledge of climate science as Al Sharpton. I loved hearing Al Sharpton a few weeks ago mumbling about the, the pollution, the, the pollutant carbon dioxide. I couldn't believe, well, we got it here. Minority neighborhoods are affected more by pollution like carbon dioxide than other neighborhoods. Haven't heard from him since. Someone, someone dummied him up pretty good. He set the climate movement back about 15 years. Now the Pope's coming. Why doesn't he just stick to Catholic doctrine? Why doesn't he just talk about morality, uh, the sale of baby body parts by Planned Parenthood, how they should all be in prison, that even Hitler didn't sell baby body parts? Why doesn't he talk about the religion of pieces called Islam and what it's doing to Christians in the Middle East? Why does he talk about the fact that Hillary Clinton's failed Arab Spring policies led to the Syrian and Libyan refugee crisis? Why does he talk about immoral behavior in America instead of promoting immoral behavior around the world? Why? Because he's a liberation theologist. By selling, by selling weakness, he can buy forgiveness. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Left his galoshes in San Francisco, and now he can't walk in the streets. Owing to the corruptitions who run the city of San Francisco, etc. Sing it, Tony. So in the last hour, we talked about the communist pope coming to town to talk about issues that he knows nothing about. The only thing he knows about climatology is that when it rains, his Vatican aides hold an umbrella up over his head. Yet he's now an expert in climate science. Then he says our economic system is flawed. It's poison. It's no good. Blames the refugee crisis on the God of money. Bad, unjust socioeconomic system that worships the God of money. What a liar. How can you people not see through this? Just stirring up the masses against the middle class like this? Right out of the communist playbook, which is how he got where he got in the, the corrupt South American nation that he rose in. So the corruption and the arising around the world of communism is something to behold. And the only thing we have against it is Donald Trump. He's so popular amongst even poor, amongst minorities, that he's just liable to win. I hope he does. And I hope that eventually we see a final slug out between capitalism and liberation theology. That would be Trump versus this sad sack throwback 1940s, 1930s uh, Union Square agitator Bernie Sanders. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Here's another story I saw that caught my attention. I had to read it twice to understand it. Million dollar listing star and his husband suffer miscarriage. I thought that they miswrote something. I said, wait a minute, million dollar listing star and his, and his husband? Don't they mean and her husband? Wait a minute, so I read it again. Million dollar listing star and his husband? So a man can't suffer a miscarriage. So they've perverted the language itself. Do you understand how crazy this country has become? I don't care, guys are gay. Now they have to change the language. This is my husband. I, this is my wife. They point to another man and say, this is my wife. So you say, no, what are you talking about? It's another man. No, it's my wife. Or the guy says, I'm the wife of that man. Okay, what does this do to your children? Twists their mind. Do you have any idea why Islam is making inroads around the world? Do you have any idea that there's a limit to how much people can take? Well, maybe you'll find out one day that it's not all about Israel. And it really is not all about American foreign policy. Maybe it's about American liberal social policies. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, well, there's a lot of people who don't understand how you can read this and not say somebody's crazy. The million dollar listing real estate agent and his partner, Derek, lost twins they were expecting via surrogate. I'm sad to share we've had a failed pregnancy, he wrote. I have cried so much that I can't cry anymore. Well, I'll leave it at that. Go explain that to your children. Can you play the other song I asked for so I can start the hour over again and make believe I didn't even read that? How could he sing like that? I don't know. There are some gifted people that come along. You know, okay, I got good insights. I connect the dots, whether it's in musicology, climatology, theology, ecology. It's the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. And I will now open it up to calls. I think I'm going to run through all the calls, 30 seconds or less. And then we'll clear the board and start again. And then at the 30 minutes after the hour, we have a columnist from the San Francisco newspaper, Phil Mateer, who's going to disclose uh, a little bit more about the, the Willie Brown case. It's really not the Willie Brown case when you think about it. It's how a major pair of political players, including Willie Brown, helped a man who allegedly punched his girlfriend a hundred times over half an hour, all recorded on security cam cameras, walk. This is something you wouldn't even see in a movie. You'd say if it was a movie set in the 1950s when they could get away with this kind of stuff, eh, maybe I would believe it. But it's happening in black and white right now in San Francisco. Why? Jeremiah, WABC, 30 seconds or less, fire. What's on your uh, in the mind? What's the dud? I hit the button and no one's there. Next case, we move on. Hello? I hit the wrong Hello. button. Okay, my mistake. We'll start again. Line 8, Jeremiah, WABC, what's on your mind? In the 1950s, Joe Stalin said the greatest enemy of communism is the Catholic Church. Therefore, we must infiltrate their seminaries. And they did. He's here. 
Uh, and it's been recognized along the way that there have been uh, many uh, socialist-leaning uh, and socialist-committed priests and nuns. Uh, it was recognized by Pope Paul at first in 1966. And the 100% right. As a matter of fact, there is a rebellion brewing in the Vatican, and this corrupt pope has actually fired and demoted very highly placed Vatican officials who oppose his communist policies. Are you aware that they're trying to stir up a revolution against him because of what he's doing? Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, he's doing exactly what Obama has done with our military and all of our other programs. So, yes, a hundred percent right. These are diehard, lockstep, anti-American, anti-capitalist, very dangerous people, and they're winning. And my final point is this. I was really trained as a for, formerly as a Marxist in our university system back in the 70s. So I, you know, I studied Karl Marx, Lenin, everything with some of the most radical people at the time. I won't mention any names. However, I really understand Marxism, socialism. And like I told you, call screener, my ex-friends who are all socialists and professors, they are jumping for joy because they know that the socialist revolution has come to America, and it's done. It's complete. They have their, they have their socialist communist uh, leader in the White House, even though you don't hear much about the term socialist communist. You know, you have a throwback like uh, Bernie uh, Sanders, whatever his name is, uh, who sounds just like, you know, one of those old professors. You hit it on the head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, look, I can read Bernie Sanders because I'm originally from New York and I met Jews like him as a child. They were la uh, the laughing stock of the Jewish people I knew. They used to laugh at guys like him. These were 10th uh, rate intellectuals. They would scream in Union Square on a soapbox. Now suddenly he's been given a stage and he's espousing what is comical, by the way. But you know that. But, but wait a minute. But you're saying something else what you're saying is what he's espousing in a crude way and in a naked way is what the pope is espousing in a more elegant way and in a way that the slick smooth barack obama says in another way exactly so right awesome. but the naked if you were to strip them bare of their edifice what you have is bernie sanders that's more or less what we're agreeing upon absolutely absolutely so let me so how did you escape how did you escape this indoctrination uh, I was committed to it for just about 30 years, and the real that, the piece that really woke me up was 9-11. You know, I know you were talking about that last week. That was the wake-up, and that was when I realized that there was... Yes, because we had been infiltrated by the left to such an extent that our border controls were destroyed, and Muslims marched into America through Boston's Logan Airport and bombed us on 9-11. And that was because of liberalism. I understand that. That's right. So, you know, so all of what... And now Obama has brought in a million Muslims since he's president, three million Muslims since 9-11. Can this country ever survive? Uh, yeah, my, look, at the one question that we really have to ask seriously, can there be ever be another honest election here? If, if this is now a socialist, communist country, you know, I, did they ever have um, honest elections in Russia or China? Or no, Cuba? no, 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 no. Look at San Francisco and you'll see what's coming on a federal, uh, on a national level. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you know, I'm with you. I mean, I, I love Donald Trump, but, you know, and, and I pray for him. But, you know, let's not be surprised if something happens. Yeah, I get it. Don't, don't even finish the sentence. Don't finish the sentence. I know we're living in a banana republic. It could be anything, any day. I get it. The minute they take him really seriously as a threat to the communist machine, anything could happen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then of and then, of course, it wouldn't be they who pulled the trigger either. It would be one of the poor, un uh, undocumented, poor aliens who did it because he was insulted. Yeah, them or some, you know, extreme uh, ex-military, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, they get a Timothy McVeigh who they brainwash and release on drugs. Another one. Right, a deranged vet. Uh, yeah, deranged vet who was uh, who slipped through the cracks. He didn't get the social services he needed. Right, and came from the movie theater in Aurora, Illinois, where he's watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and he came with forty-three weapons. I get the picture, which is why they wanted this arm America. That's the last linchpin, by the way, of a communist takeover, is taking our guns away. You know that, don't you? Yeah, can you oh, name yeah, one? Com can you name one communist country where anyone can own a gun? Name one. None. None. It's name one, name one. Do the Castros permit anyone to own a shotgun? No. Does Kim Jong mentally ill permit anyone to own a, uh, a pea shooter? No. Because they know that the police state that they run could not survive if the people were armed. Okay, listen, my friend, you're a very educated man. Thank God you made the transition to a normal